Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Empower Amsterdam community mm -hmm. chat. My name is Sarah, and I'm a volunteer with Empower Amsterdam. This month's theme is Ignite. So we've been trying to focus on how we can reignite our motivation, reignite our job searches, and kind of uplift our networking opportunities as well, despite everything else that's going on in the world. <laughs> So with that in mind, today's chat um, with Jean-Christophe is about rekindling your natural spot. For those of you who haven't joined one of our chats before, Empower Amsterdam is an organisation whose mission is to help the unemployed and employed professionals in the Netherlands. We offer community networking events like this, live sessions, workshops and free coaching. Today's host is Jean-Christophe. He is a certified mindset coach with a strong business background. He helps people transform their mindset, live their unlived life and reconnect them to the essence of who they really are. So I'm going to hand over to you now, Jean-Christophe, and I uh, hope you all enjoy this morning's workshop, guys. Bonjour tout le monde. Don't worry, it's going to be in English, but um, there will be some French words that I use. Um, what I would like us to do before we start with the program is I would like to bring everybody together at the same place and we're going to do that with a central exercise and Sarah has been very kind so she's going to I'm going to speak and she's going to show you what you need to do we're going to do that for a few minutes and then we're going to get into the presentation is that okay so what I would like you to do is to stand up if it's possible leave your chair stand up and um, for the ones who do um, yoga, we're going to do the mountain pose, which is very much, I want you to have, you know, feeling of connection, your feet, the sole on the ground. Close your eyes, let your arm down and start to basically pay attention to your breathing. Just have a couple of big breaths in and out. And this is the first pose, it's the first S, it's stand. I take care of that time. Now, we're going to start the second um, S, which is a spinal breathing. And you're going to look at Sarah, what she does. So she's going to hunch and cross uh, arm while she's basically breathing out. So she's going to do and then she's going to Bend back, open her arm, and just breathe in. Okay? And she's going to repeat that quite a few times. So breathing out, and crossing your arm, and bending back, opening your arm. Do it at your own rhythm. Once you get the movement, you don't need to watch anybody else. And just do it a few times. And I want to see big stretches. As you bend forward and as you bend backward. Two or three more. And when you're ready, you come back in to stone position. So in the initial position, just close your eyes. Um, you should notice your metabolism is heightened, so just stay with it. And when you're ready, let's grab the chair again, and we're going to do the third S, which is you're going to sit. But I want you to sit with intention. I want you to sit with a straight back, and I would like you to have your feet really touching the floor, your arm rest, your eyes closed, and just reconnect with your breathing after this heightened metabolism. And we're going to do the four S. We're going to side out, even if it's you know early in the morning, side out any frustration you have had so far. <sighs> or it could be this weekend or last week. So, you breathe in and you side out any frustration, you let them out. And 
because there is heavy, I like to hear some siding because for now it's very silent. Okay. One or two more siding out. And when you're ready, we're going to do the fifth S. I want you to smile, keep your eyes closed, but I want really you to fake a smile or give me a natural smile, I want to look at that. And if you had open eyes, you would have sparkling, smiling eyes. Uh, now I'm seeing some serious smiles, that's pretty good. So stay with it, stay with it. 15 seconds, we are producing oxytocin as you do this, so it's working. Thank you for those beautiful smiles. Um, now I want you to finish with a six S in silence. So relax your face, keep your eyes closed. Do some deep breathing. Be very quiet. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And Sarah, because we're not a big group, you can unmute everybody. Yeah, I, I really missed out on the siding out. Everybody oh. was mute, so I had to I, I had to imagine what it was. <laughs> okay, but I wanted to connect with that energy. So everybody can be uh, uh, unmute because um, it's you know it's supposed to be a little bit of uh, interactive as well. And, uh, <clears throat> one group, I can't manage any any questions. So um, we're going to start. We're going to talk about Spark today but more than talking about spark i hope we're going to embody what spark is and we're going to do that with this session so if we move to the agenda um i'm going to talk for 15 minutes or so about about spark then we will have a first breakout room where we you will need a pen and paper uh, because we're going to do an exercise then we're just going to come back and we're going to Tell me what you've learned about this. And then I'm going to send you again to a breakout room with more questions. And we will come back. And I hope you will tell me what the learning has been. And then there will be some key takeaways in case you forget about what we discussed. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds and good. Next session, mm -hmm. next slide. So first, um, um, before I, I do, you know, like uh, the sage on the stage, tell me, write for me in the chat, what do you understand by the word spark? And also tell me what kind of emotions it triggers in you, that word. So I want to see some um, chat responses. Mojo, joy, inspiration. Pretty good stuff. Alignment. Life. The joy of doing something you love. Fire. Bliss. Wow. Energy. Wow. Who don't want to have spark in their life, man? It can be the start of something. Okay. So anticipation, excitement. Flow, okay, I see a lot of alignment with life and energy, good. So it seems that you're at the right place because um, well, from what you write, it's something you, 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 you seem to desire in your life. So let's look at the next um, slide. And you will see that, I'm waiting for Sarah. Okay, so um, you will see that basically what you've been writing falls into two categories. Uh, spark can be defined as a physical phenomenon, which is that small fiery particle. Yeah, that's typically what you see when you set a fire. But it's also a heartfelt emotion, and that's what we read about that fierce sense of being alive, that sense of excitement 
an intense quality of feeling. Okay, so that's what spark is. So why do we do a session about spark? Uh, Sarah, can you move to the next slide? I wanna I wanna start with a uh, with a little bit of a personal story, which um, there was a time in my life where I was supporting my wife who was fighting against leukemia. Um, it's a very nasty condition, as you can imagine. And in her case, it lasted for a long time, three years. And supporting my wife for three years meant that I completely lost my spark. But I was a perfect husband, a perfect nurse. I was really doing well with the kids. And from the outside, everybody was telling me, oh, wow, you're doing a fantastic job with everything which is happening for you. Mm -hmm. But one evening, after three years, I went to see my wife and I said, how is that working for you? How well am I supporting you? Mm -hmm. Because I've been you know, bearing that cross with you for the last three years. And she said to me, it's not working. Because I feel like at the bottom of a well, and every morning when I wake up, the first thing I see is your face, and it looks like a shadow. And you try to read my face, and you cast that very long shadow on my day because I feel that I'm, you know, I'm not doing well, and you are basically depressed. If you want to do something for me, bring your spark back. And I said, but I can't. It's gone. It's, it's just I'm spent. There is nothing left in me. And she said, if you love me, go in and find your spark. And that was the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my life. Of course, to go in, which I didn't want because I didn't want to be in touch with my emotion. And it was like a bomb city. There was nothing left. The only thing left I could see was the tiny little spark, which despite everything had not been damaged. But the hardest part was to bring it back, to give myself permission, to give myself yeah, permission to be with my spark at a time in my life where the only thing I would feel about the spark was to be guilty. And over a period of a week, I brought the spark back. And despite the situation, I decided to be this. So I learned from that experience that Ken, you said it is in the midst of winter that I discovered an invincible summer within me. And for me, there was something very clear in my life experience. We are by nature spark. We are by nature fiercely alive. It is our birthright. It is our natural state. However, most of the time, we don't feel that spark. We don't connect with it. We even wonder if we had a spark in the first place. That leads me to the next slide. So how is that possible that our true nature is to be spark, but we don't feel the spark? It's because we have a perfect system. So the perspective I want you to explore today is it's not about what do I need to do to bring the spark in my life. It's what do I need to stop doing so mm -hmm. I can be the spark that I am. And I want to share with you, and that's what you're going to have to do, is like when you don't feel the spark in you, it's because you've created a perfect system which ensures that it's no longer being fed. So if I talk about the situation with my wife, there was no spark in me. Okay, yeah, she was sick, but I was all the time thinking about the future. I was all the time worried. When there were small moments of pleasure, I was telling myself, it's not going to last. Yeah. So I had created a lot of barriers that even today I have a perfect system to prevent me from experiencing the spark every day. These days, I love the work I do with coaching, but I work, 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 and work. This is not very good for my spark. Mm. I keep producing endless to-do lists, all these things I want to do in life. This is not very good for my spark. I try to only do useful things because I have so many things to do. Not very good for my spark. When I have time for myself, I'm always with music or podcasts in my ear where 
I know that spark is sometimes emerging from silence. So I'm creating conditions for not feeling the spark. I drink a lot of coffee and sugar. Well, this on my biology is definitely not helping the spark. Maybe a short fuse spark, short, but it's not going to be very lasting. So what I want you to do is before you go to the breakout room is to explore that perspective, which is you are naturally spark. However, you have created a perfect system, which means that most days you are not. And what you will do on that piece of paper is to explore for yourself what is that system you've put in place, which is preventing you to be your true nature. And you will discuss it in groups of three. Mm -hmm. If we move to the next slide, so that's exactly what I've been explaining. Try to become aware and be explicit about your perfect system, which ensures that you are not spark. And you will have 10 minutes to do it. Are you creating the breakout rooms, Sarah? Are you ready for them now? Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Have fun, okay? <laughs> so Sarah, 